I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. The Big Lebowski is one of those movies that if you're coming to it cold, not knowing the works of the Coen brothers, would probably make you ponder and ask, what the hell did I just watch? I admit it. It is a story about a man who just falls into things rather than just pushes the action. So, since it's one of my top three movies of all time, I think it's time for me to review it. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? The story of The Big Lebowski begins when a certain guy named The Dude comes back home from shopping and gets attacked by two goons wanting money from him. One of those thugs proceeds to pee on The Dude's rug before both realize that this Jeffrey Lebowski is not the Lebowski they were looking for. Woo? Yeah. Isn't this guy supposed to be a millionaire? This leads the dude to finding the big Lebowski and being entangled in a ransom case with him as the middleman. All along, the dude has his social commitments to his friends and their bowling team, to his landlord, and of course to the big Lebowski and to Lebowski's daughter, Maud. And it all wraps up rather abruptly at the end where we don't get a really satisfying normal ending to the story. However, we do get life lessons, but also one of the greatest one-liners in a movie ever. The dude abides. I wonder if I've seen that on a t-shirt. A t-shirt that you might have seen, but didn't quite know what it actually meant. Forget it, Donnie, you're out of your element. To understand a little bit more about the movie, let's talk about the making of it. We shall start with the Coen brothers, who admitted that the writing they do is unconventional. They work on a script, and then when they encounter a problem, they just stop working at it at all, and they start working on a different project. Then after a few weeks, they come back and deal with it and figuring it all out. This script is no different. The reasoning behind this is always to have several projects at various stages of completion and always have something to present to the studios should they be approached. The fuck is with this guy? Who is he? The script for The Big Lebowski was pretty much done when the Coen brothers worked on Barton Fink back at the start of the 90s. Hence, the time of the movie is set around the first Gulf War. The actors they wanted at the time were not available, so they moved on to a different project called Fargo before circling around to this film project. When Jeff Bridges was approached, he read the script and asked if the brothers knew him back in the 70s because the dude was pretty much him at high school. Initially, Bridges didn't actually want to make the film because he thought it would set a bad example for his daughters. His middle child told him they knew he was acting. They peed on the dude's rug. Donnie, you're out of your element. When constructing the character, Bridges took inspirations from a guy called Jeff Dowd who was actually in the Seattle Seven, a anti-war movement that protested the Vietnam War. The funny part is, the dude has a picture of Richard Nixon bowling in his apartment. It's just a fun contradiction in a blink and you'll miss it kind of moment in the movie. That a member of your team, uh, Walter Solchak, drew a firearm during league play. The only ad lib moment in the movie is actually the moment where the dude calls the Big Lebowski a human paraquat. All the rest of the dudes and mans, all that, was fully scripted. A fact that kind of surprised Bridges, who has never worked with the Coen brothers before. It was actually John Goodman who told him that the Coen brothers don't make many rewrites. You just met me, you, you human paraquat! One of the funnier parts of the information about Bridges that I found was that all of the dude's clothings that you see in the movie are actually belonging to Jeff Bridges himself. Not that he owns the costumes, but he actually brought them from home. Everything down to the jelly sandals that he wears throughout the movie. And those stained t-shirts we see him in, those actually appeared in The Fisher King, a movie that he did back in 1991. Hey, hey this is a private residence, man. Talking about John Goodman, he has worked with the Coen brothers before, and when they wrote the script, they had John Goodman pegged for the role of Walter. The character was based on their friend John Milius, a bombastic individual in real life that has a fascination with military and firearms. Even down to how Walter looks like, 
It is based off Milius. It's the whole world gone crazy! Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the rules? Goodman said that this was his favorite movie that he did with the Coen brothers, stating he never had more fun acting in a movie more than this one. The diner where the dude and Walter discuss the severed toe is an actual diner, but it was already closed down at the time. It was only open especially for the shoot. And also a nice little tidbit, it is the same diner that we see in the movie American History X. There are ways, dude. You don't want to know about it, believe me. Yeah, but Walter... Hell, I can get you a toe by 3 o'clock this afternoon with nail polish. There are some more little facts about the movie that I found really interesting. The role of Bunny was supposed to go to Charlize Theron, but went to Tara Reid instead. Jeff Bridges had to rub his eyes heavily in every scene that he was supposed to be baked. And every time you see him drinking a white Russian, he actually drank a white Russian. Poor guy doesn't even like the cocktail. Hey, careful, man, there's a beverage here. Both Steve Buscemi and Sam Elliott, much like John Goodman, had their roles written with them getting cast in mind. And finally, Sam Elliott's speech at the end of the movie was a continuous two minutes and 27 seconds scene shot in just one take. However, he did have to make that take several times to make sure it was flawless. And of course, that the pro bowler, who was actually brought as a consultant, hit his perfect strike. It's good knowing he's out there, the dude, taking her easy for all the sinners. I watched this film for the very first time in a little art house theater that was known for showing all kinds of little weird and wacky movies. I didn't think I'd just seen one of the greatest movies I've seen of all time. What I did watch was a typical movie by a non-typical filmmaker that I knew I liked. It was a movie I knew I wanted to watch again for both the story and the hidden meaning behind it all. My favorite character in the movie is still Walter. His over-the-top mannerisms and his ability to take a simple concept and blow it out of proportion to create an absurd moment and, of course, laughter. It's the way he takes calm little things from a 1 to an absolute 11. The best example for this is Walter flipping out on the kid Larry while trying to question him about that lost briefcase. Do you see what happens, Larry, when you fuck a stranger in the ass? Of course, it's not the only scene. It manifests itself also in the bowling alley when Smokey goes over the line. Or does he? The actor playing Smokey, Jimmy Dale Gilmour, says he knows if Smokey actually made it through the line. But of course, it's a big secret. Rocket zero. And yet another version of the Walter blowout is in the affirmation diner scene, in the conversation about the missing toe. Lady, I got buddies who died face down in the muck so that you and I can enjoy this family restaurant. It is Walter who is the main driving force that moves the plot along. He is the one that pushes the dude to act, or he is the one that acts alongside with the dude. It's the dude reacting to Walter that puts the dude in certain places or certain situations. For me, the dude was always kind of the audience that are watching the movie. He is our representation on screen. He is the main protagonist of the story, but in a way, we are as inquisitive as him. We are ambivalent like him, and we want to be left alone, bowling like him. Yes, the dude has an eccentric behavior, but all those are unique to him, as we all have these unique behaviors ourselves. You know, that's just like... Uh your opinion, man. It is kind of hilarious to know that every man or dude or shit or fuck that the dude actually says is calculated and written down in the script because Jeff Bridges sold us on its delivery. You have to use so many cuss words. The fuck are you talking about? It seems like for him, it was all made up and he was genuinely reacting to the stuff around him so effortlessly. The dude absorbs the environment he is in and makes it his own. He spits out these sentences and lines as he hears them on TV or his friends and he repeats them to someone completely different. 
Let me give you some examples. This will not stand, this aggression. This aggression will not stand, man. To use the parlance of our times. You know, a young trophy wife in the parlance of our times. Bridges sold us that he is the dude, or his dudeness. Duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. We believe him as he lumbers around in this film, trying to figure out all of the ins and outs of this curious case. He gets pushed, pulled, shoved, beaten, drugged, punched, followed, but he keeps going because the dude abides. Meaning, the people revolving around him are changing, but he stays the same. This movie always manages to make me smile, laugh, and think about the absurdities of life. I used to dislike that the movie kind of stops at a certain point and doesn't officially have a satisfying ending, until I realized that if it just continued, it was just going to ramble again. When that ball hits those pins at the end of the movie, it's a ding that tells you, yeah, this movie has come to an end. And this review has come to an end. So if you haven't seen this movie yet, please do yourself a favor and watch it. You may not get it at first, but it will grow on you. An absolute gem of a... <sighs> there I go again. I'm rambling. So remember, hope is a good thing, maybe even the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next video.